Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Adventures of a Real Estate Investor. I'm Susie. And I'm Michael. We're excited to join us for this adventure. So today's very special guest is Alex Jarbo. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, we're super, super excited. It'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> Absolutely. You're, you have a really impressive portfolio. We're really excited to learn more about you, Alex. Would you mind sharing with our Ventures, Ventures family? A little bit more about your background and like why you started investing in real estate? Yeah. So I originally had started in the military, the United States military. And then I, about a year before my enlistment had ended, I sort of just decided I didn't want to re-enlist. And I started looking at just different things I could get into. I, I knew I wanted to get into business. I just didn't know what I wanted to get into. But I, I had read a lot of different business books, stock books, crypto, but real estate really had caught my eye. I liked, I enjoyed like the, just the control you had over real estate with forced appreciation, all the stuff you could do to a property to make it more valuable. So I'd originally had joined a flipping mentorship. And when I realized the gentleman who had owned that flipping mentorship and run that program, all of their long-term wealth was actually tied into short-term rentals. And I, I got him on a call. I was like, Hey, I'm really interested in this. He, he showed me his numbers and like what his rentals were making even at that time. And it was just craziness compared to like long-term rentals. Yeah. And so he had helped me choose a market, which the market that I currently live in Asheville. So the day I got out of the military, I moved straight here, um, got my broker's license. Yeah. Got my broker's license. And then I just started looking for a property for myself. What, why, how, how I got into real estate development was just. I couldn't find anything that was either at that time in my price range or it wouldn't like anything that I was looking at that was in my price range would it have done well as a short term rental. It maybe would have done well if I put a long term tenant in there, but not necessarily a short term. rental. There's nothing unique about the property. So my very first real estate investment was a ground up construction, new development, a, a frame. And then we own that property to this day. Yeah. Yes. So cool. So you've got one I've heard. <laughs> so that's exciting. That's great because like you need to think about it, like most people would be, well, first couple of things about your story, but most people, when they would get to that point, they're like, I'm finding nothing that would work as a short-term rental and they just give up, right? We're like, no, if it's not there, I'm just going to build it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Especially with, I would like scroll through Instagram and just see all these awesome looking properties. I was like, can't be, I mean, it, it, it ended up costing more than I, we thought, but I mean, even, even what it cost that, like we had complete control over the design and everything. And I mean, we found the right GC and everything and it. Yeah, it was, and I mean, that's our business model now. It's just, we all develop, we develop most of our properties. That's so cool. I want to, I want to put a pin in that because I want to get back to yeah. that. Um, <laughs> like two seconds, but first of all, a couple of things here. First of all, thank you for your service. I was going to say that. As you know, I'm like 18 years in the Air Force. So yeah, it's awesome. Second of all, it's really cool that when you had the calls with your mentor, like learning more about like the, I mean, they were flipping, but then you realized that he had all of his wealth into short-term rentals, which is cool for somebody who's young to realize that. Because when you're young, all you want to do is make money, right? But you had the wherewithal to realize that, hey, flipping is a job and you make yeah. money, but you're also like working your butt off to do it, right? And you didn't, there's no like- Yeah, and I'm- I was just having this conversation earlier. Like I'm, I wasn't a fan of putting all this time, energy, stress, cause things go wrong in any type, anything you do. And I wasn't, I didn't want to just do all that and just flip it and just get rid of it. It's like, I wanted to hold it. So yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you guys okay. But now we can circle back to the building part. It's for short term rentals go. Obviously, you know, you, you're saying you're scrolling through Instagram. You saw all these awesome, like short term rentals that are up. And I'm sure like, you know, Airbnb does like the, Cool, like little, you know, tree houses that they obviously advertise yeah. their landing pages, fight that. Like, obviously, and tree house. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, like, you wanted to develop a, a, an A frame. An A frame stands out from the typical short term rental. It's not like somebody's like little, you know, the bedroom in the back of their house or whatever that they're renting. Right. What did you read or how did you know exactly how you wanted to build and how you wanted to design the short term rental? Did you have experience, you know, staying in a bunch of short term rentals or? Yeah, no, not at all. I mean, so I I had the experience of seeing just the long term rental stuff through just the group I was a part of in the flipping right. mentorship. So it wasn't necessarily okay. How good can this go? It's okay. What's my exit if this doesn't work out? So I mean, no matter what business you're in outside of real estate, like you always should be thinking of the exit in mind. Us real estate investors, we already do that. 
It's like, okay, how long am I going to hold this for? Maybe I hold it forever. But I, I thought of the exit in mind first. And I was like, if this doesn't work out, which I, I had a feeling it would have just by looking at what was renting on Airbnb compared to what my mortgage was going to be. I had a feeling it was going to do well. Not a feeling, like I looked at my numbers, but my exit was either renting it out as a long-term rental or just selling it. I mean, this was back in 2000, was it 15, 16 that, I mean, we were still considered in a really good real estate market. I mean, even today yeah. we are, but yeah. 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 That's really cool. I mean, with developing real property, you, you said there's, you always think about the exit. There's multiple exits there, right? If, you have, if anything happens or you could sell it, right? That's an exit strategy. If the short-term rental, Obviously, short-term rental is another extra strategy, or or you can just long-term rent it, right? Or medium-term. Yeah, medium -term. You can you can mid-term rent it, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, and the other thing was like it was only the cabin's only eight hundred thirty square foot, so it's I'm sure a couple would have, like if if we couldn't do anything with it for any reason, I'm sure a couple would have came in there. And all of our properties are permanent foundation stick built houses, so anybody can get a mortgage on our properties. So that it's I'm sure a couple would have came in and purchased that thing in a heartbeat if we actually listed it. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah it's, it's... <laughs> so, yeah, I love short term rentals. It's awesome. We only have eight, but I'm sure you have even more than that. That's really cool. But what, where are you? So, from that first development, I know your goal now. We're gonna, I'm going to let you share it with the listeners. But, like, from that first development, it just worked out. And you're like, this is also making a hit or a fist money. It's working out really well, things like that. Yeah, like, yeah. And then what propelled you to. Kind of yeah. So one, one turned into two, two turned into four, and then I brought on investor capital. But what, what really set me up to, to sort of skyrocket a lot of the success we've had just in the last four years was that very first one. And I can literally talk two hours just on land, <laughs> but I've, I've heard, I've, I've talked to some friends that have done stuff similar to me in different, in the States and different parts of the States. And we got lucky, not lucky, but we, we found a parcel that we built that first A-frame on when it was, it was two, two acre parcels. So it was four acres, but one side of print, one acre or one parcel appraised for so much that it, it appraised for the purchase price that we were able to get the other one for essentially a dollar at closing. So once that first one was built, we just turned around and got another construction loan and use that land as equity to qualify for the next loan. We ended up actually doing two smaller A-frame right next to each other. So there's three up on that little hillside. And then we just kept, I mean, as as we were doing that, property values were going up, up, up. And then some lenders in the short-term rental space really started. I think this was back in 2017, 18. I would say 18. 18, a lot of some lenders in the short-term rental space started to come about. They're like, okay, there's, this is actually working, blah, blah, blah. There's money in this. Where I was able to do a couple cash out refinances and put that into other deals. And then I brought on a couple investors, a couple of JVs that I did. Um, and then I started raising capital last year, which I've, I've sort of not shut the door on that, but I'm not really raising too much capital right now. Yeah, that was sort of the evolution of that as I brought on my investors after my first four. And then what we're doing now with higher interest rates is we're actually purchasing these like cottage communities that are, there aren't too many of them in each market. Like we just got one under contract that's seven cabins, but interest rates go up, prices go down. So we were actually get it, able to get it under list price, which was insane to think about even last year. So that's sort of, I, I, my goal is to develop or purchase 650 cabins in the next three years. And that that is one way we're also, we're doing it is purchasing these already communities that already have something like a, an established uh, brand, essentially. And then the one that we just got under contract has 10 to 12 acres attached to it where we can develop more properties on it. So that that's how I plan on getting to that big number is by both developing my own projects, but also just in cap, like bringing on some of these people that want to sell out these cabin communities as well. That's so cool. And so listeners, if you did hear that, I'll repeat that again, 650 short-term rentals, in three years. That's yeah. And I like what you said there, because I think I sent it to you guys as cabins. I'm down to do, I'm completely open to doing like boutique hotels as well. I think that's going to be next year is uh, doing like some conversions, like metro in the metro areas, condominium conversions into boutique hotels, essentially. I have a question for you. What yeah. about, and this is just like totally random, but boutique hotels yeah, yeah. ain't like on places like Route 66 or like the nostalgic yeah. Hotels instead of in metro areas. Yeah, yeah. No, so I mean, I just, I, it's funny. I, all of my properties are rural. Like uh, when I say metro areas, I just think, yeah, but you said like boutique hotel in like more nostalgic areas. That would be phenomenal. 
And it's it's interesting because I don't know if you guys have played around with influencer marketing for your short term rentals, but it's it's one of those things like it's truly like if you if you build it, they will come if you have the right influencers marketing the property because people don't care where it's going to be because It's like the person that they follow stayed at the property and they thought it was cool. So we use a company called Stayamo that that will link up essentially property owners or hosts with influencers that have any type of and a lot of times you're just trading your vacancy days for content. So yeah, not, it's a win. It's a win win on both sides. They get a free stay. A lot of times they're like doing like a big push in media through your state or city. Yeah, it's, a, it's truly a win win. We just did our first one and I, the video hasn't published for it. But I was like, OK, this is really cool. Like this is something either if you have a direct booking site or you can just push them to your Airbnb link. It's it's a way to market your property where it's like a truly a win win. That's so cool. Yeah. I know you're an influencer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have so many questions. Yeah, 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 let's do it. I got, I got all time. Be here for a lot. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So, first question: Building these short-term rentals, are you finding investors like one-off investors who want to buy them, and you're building them for them, or are you building and fully them yourselves, or both? Yeah. So I, I won't, I won't build or manage anything that I'm not an equity partner in. Okay. Uh, so when I, I do prefer doing the JV model over the syndication model. Now, granted, I am doing some syndications, but it's it's with fund managers that it's not my syndication. It's their syndication. I'm essentially the deal finder and the operator for those. So I personally like doing just one offs. And when I say one offs, I mean, I have one investor right now, just one investor where we're building six cabins together in a cluster development. So one investor bringing up all the capital helped me guarantee the loan. And then I take each deal is a little bit different, but I take some sort of equity partnership in that. And then there's a management fee that goes because I manage the properties through my company as well. So there's a management fee attached to that as well. Yes. And are these yeah. all in like the Smoky Mountains or? Where... Yeah. So we're we're in the Blue Ridge Mountains, but in that area in Western okay. North Carolina, you touch touch the Smoky Mountains a little bit. I, li I like mountain markets. They tend to be a little bit less seasonal. If you have a mountain market with a unique property, usually during the down season, the property becomes the experience and the attraction outside of the city, and it's flip flopped during the high season. Like Absolutely, that. yeah. I really enjoy like the Burr Ridge Smoky Mountain area just because of the seasonality of it. Yeah, or yeah, lack of seasonality, I should say. Yeah, which is really cool because even in January, February, the slow times, it's just so I don't Yeah, I mean, we we. I mean, we obviously we're not like we're in our high season right now, which is leaf season, but we still cash flow really well. Yeah, we still cash flow really well, like January, February, mid March. I would say March is probably our slowest month because it's like when the cold is like sticking around but not really going away. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's like, okay, we've just done six months of it. We're done now. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> and that's really cool that you showing lenders too. That's another question because our property we converted it. And it's like a, a multifamily property that are converted short term rentals. But getting a loan on that, they will only underwrite to what the long term rents would be. Yes. Because, and that, that's where that strategy came from was that we actually did our first one as a second home loan. Yeah. So that I, that's, that's a strategy people can do if they want. Now, at that time, it was only 10% down, which is nutty because I think now it's like 20, but still, I mean, you're, if, if anyone who's getting like a residential construction, I try to, my very first one was a two time close loan and we can get into that, but. I recommend just real quick, anyone who gets a construction loan to do a one-time close loan because you don't have to go through the closing process twice. Okay. Yeah. You close and you get the money and then you build. Yeah. And then it goes immediately into PERM. It just goes from an interest only payment into a permanent fixed rate mortgage once you get the certificate of occupancy. Because I did that on my very first one. Now, there are benefits to that on this two-time closed loan, depending on where you are in the market, because we were able to do a cash out refinance on that second close into the permanent loan where we pulled money out. But it, that that closing like loomed over our heads for eight months, eight, nine months. So it just, it I could my finances were like frozen until that we could do that. So that's why I recommend just a one-time close. So I don't know what a two-time close is. Can you tell me? A two-time close that you get, so it's it's the same, so it's the same lender, everything. So in the commercial world, it's pretty normal. It's it's called bridge financing or construction uh, financing. Okay. Yeah. But you, you essentially, you get a construction loan that's an interest-only payment, and then you have to refinance out of that loan into a permanent loan of whatever the interest rates are for when you are done. With the one-time close loan, your fit, your rate is fixed. Yeah. Like at the first closing, doesn't matter what happens. That's on the residential side. On the commercial side, it's it's adjustable rate during the construction phase, and then it goes into fixed on whatever whatever the interest rate is there. And we, we've done a little bit of both. So again, more questions. 
no, I'm, I, I got no, I got I have nothing after this. So. Okay. I still haven't chipped away at some of the other questions. But when you're talking about building a land and stuff like that, obviously Susie and I have developed or in the process of developing right now as well. Awesome. Like, obviously you have to go through all the zoning processes, but that as yep. well. Do you seek out land that's already zoned residential or do you buy raw land that you'll zone it and go through the whole process or yeah, so I'm not a fan of rezoning. I'll I'll try to you can you can get away with do it depending on what zoning you are. Like the six cabins that we're building right now, that's all residential. It's not commercial. There are commercial lenders out there that will lend on residential because you're essentially building a business, like you're building a cabin community outside of the real estate that you're developing. And it's really cool. People in the States are investing in the States. You can get SBA financing on this stuff, like seven A at some pretty good the rate is higher, but the the down payment requirements are lower which is phenomenal. So that's what I forgot your original question. I'm sorry. In, in terms of the financing piece. Yeah. 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 I just, the question was just about asking if you go after any land that's not zoned. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. everything is zoned, everything is zoned correctly for us. Like we, 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 we're not afraid of our county or city. We, we just had a phone call with our county official, like our planning department this morning. You, you shouldn't, you shouldn't try to tiptoe around those people. No, I mean, some people do it. Like Asheville, North Carolina itself does not allow for short-term rentals. So we just pull up the map and we invest just on the outskirts of it. So the, and the, yeah, uh, we, I, I try to get, we have to get short-term rental complex permits for anything that's over three units. Honestly, most, if if it's there and they haven't made it illegal yet, it's it's fine. It's a, you just have to stand in front of your board and tell them, hey, I'm not going to ruin the community essentially. Yeah. That's all they need to know is my, for anyone who's going, even if it's for one property, for anyone who's listening, who wants to go up in front of their board, even if it's for just for one property, the goal with that should be to convince them that you're managing the property better than if someone was living there long-term. That's it. That's all I tell people. Convince them that you're doing that through your management practices or whatever. And they'll, they'll give you, I got a set, I got a seven to zero. Yes. On my last one. So wow. yeah, don't be scared of those people. Cause I'm sure a lot of people are scared listening about their County and their planning department. They're just people at the end of the day, making those decisions. Yeah. And listening yeah, to my, my County, my County knows me at this point. So. You want to be that person. Yeah. Just high five everyone on the way out. <laughs> yeah, bring up, bring, bring up donuts, coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Was there any any concern if once city of Asheville kind of expands, if they would Asheville crack down on? Uh, I don't think I don't think so. And if they did, every, when they cracked down, everything everyone was grandfathered in. Okay. So like the the rentals that were already who had done it right were grandfathered in. So that's what I mean. Don't don't try to skirt those rules. And then investing in mountain markets a little bit more rural. There was already like before Airbnb and VRBO, short-term rentals have been around forever. It's just you had to pick up a phone or you had to call a real estate agent a book. So those communities already exist throughout the whole country. It's just uh, so we like investing in those communities because I don't think short-term rentals would ever go away in those communities because it's there's already a culture there of short-term rentals. If you look at like the the Smokies, like the the Smokies, some HOAs have rules in their HOAs to protect short-term rentals. So it's like. Yeah, we like investing in just more rural areas compared to the metro markets, unless if we're doing the boutique hotel, which is com a completely different permit. It's a yeah. hotel permit at that point. Yeah. yeah. With everything that's happening with this uh, supply and demand process and just supply chain in general, and I know like before you had said like multiple exit strategies is like your way around anything, any changes, but like how, I don't want to say use the word disrupt, but like how did that, I guess, challenge you initially? Yeah. So. I looked at, again, the long term, five to 10 yeah. years. I want to be in this business 10 years from now. What type of property or what do I need to do in my business to make that happen? So there's two things. Whoever's going into any type of property investing, any type of investing in general, be prepared for your prop. Like you need to be planning your business around a recession. Like you, think of your business already in a recession, meaning your your property values just took a 20 to 40% hit. That's something that you need to be thinking about when you first start. That's not to scare you. That's just... You, the, the, when I talk about staying power, you, you, if you're getting into a business and you're, you're putting your time, you're putting your blood, sweat, and tears into a business, you want it to be around in 10 years, or at least I hope. So, right. <laughs> so the, what, when I looked at that, I saw that I think unique, and uh, Airbnb just recently did a redesign on their websites, but it, it sort of fed into our business model, which is like developing unique properties. There, there aren't enough of them out there. You mentioned tree houses. We're working on a tree house community right now. Yes. And yeah, so so a frames, barn style communities, cottages, chalets, tree houses. Like people love that. I feel like that's timeless stuff. Like that that's truly timeless stuff. Especially 
what's happening now and Airbnb already did it. They, they, if you look at their website right now, it's completely redesigned around unique stays. The yeah. entire website is unique stays. So feeding into that a little bit helps as well. And I like to say Instagrammable properties. If you put your property on Instagram, if you have an influencer come to your properties, they're going to be proud. It's going to be a pretty easy sell on their social media. Okay. This is an A-frame. This is a tree house. This is a log cabin. We build a lot of log cabins in the mountains and stuff like that. Uh, compared to a nor I, I hate to say boring house, but like my YouTube channel says, stop building boring buildings. It's, it's, the same, it's, it's, the same idea. it's the same idea. It's like, I feel like a lot of people who jumped in the short-term rental space that just saw the, they're not, they weren't property managers or they don't have their own podcast like this. They just jumped in it just like how people jumped into crypto just because it was like the cool thing. But a lot of those people are going to start getting pushed out. I feel like with, with this correction that we're going through, which isn't, again, not to scare people because you can make your property unique yeah. in, uh, on the interior side, outside of the uh, in exterior, but that's something that you should be st like, you should start thinking about is, okay, how do I make the interior? I can't control the outside. So how do I make the inside really pop with, I recommend doing like murals, accent walls, playing around with your furniture furniture, colors, stuff like that. Yeah. And I mean, Pinterest is a great place to even get. Oh my gosh. Because yeah, so many yeah. people are like. My builder, my builder and I both have Pinterest boards that we share <laughs> stuff. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Because a lot of people just think they can't come up with the ideas. Well, don't come up with the ideas then. Like you. Yeah. Mark, real estate's so niche that like, you're not stealing an idea from California or wherever. Like yeah. that property exists in that market. It's not like an internet marketing company where like, like you'd be stealing an idea of, and it, it would live on the internet. Like it, your real estate's very niche, like to a specific market. Exactly. So we, we have some floor plans that we're copying that we've purchased floor plans from like upstate New York developers or from California. Like these properties are being like just the floor plan we purchased. We already know it exists somewhere else, but we're fine with putting it in our market because like people aren't going to complain about that. Yeah. And the chance that they even find it in the other market, it's really slim. <laughs> right. Even if they do, it's okay, cool. It's in two areas. Yeah. Totally. I love that. I do too. So I, I know you kind of mentioned as interest rates are rising. So right now we're recording at the end of September. This will come out at the beginning of October anyway. So it'll be uh, within a reasonable time frame where interest rates are still in a higher than they were, you know, six months ago. Whatever. But you kind of mentioned now that kind of shifting your strategy a little bit as interest rates go up, you know, prices come down, things like that. So you're shifting maybe bases of not building so much, but also acquiring these larger like cabins with that or how else are interest rates affecting your business right now? And what are you doing to pivot? So I'm a writer for bigger pockets for their blog, for their short-term rental content. Like half of the stuff that's out there on short-term rentals on the blog is stuff written by me. And that was one of the very first articles that I wrote for them was the, how does recessions affect short-term rentals? And what I said in that article, isn't anything crazy. It was just don't discount real estate investing just because the interest rates went up. It's really easy to invest in real estate when everything's really chill and we're at record low interest rates. So I just underwrote a property with one of the fund managers that I work with a couple of days ago. It's the property that we just got under contract. And we underwrote it at an 8% interest rate, but the numbers still worked at that. So it's like, Things are on sale right now in the markets and they're going to continue to go on sale. When I say like my strategy for short-term rentals, it's just in any real estate class. Don't discount your real estate investing just because we're approaching some record level interest rates from the last 20 or 30 years, whatever. That, that's what I would say to anyone listening. Go through the deal. Stick to your parameters. Maybe you have to change a couple of things. You're, you might not be making as much money on the deal, but if you can cash flow and you're comfortable with that cash flow, it doesn't matter what the interest rate is. You'll If you can make it work in this market, when the interest rates drop, because what goes up must go down and the other way around. Once interest rates drop again, you'll be able to refinance out of that interest rate and you're going to cash flow even better. And then uh, it just in general as well, just a general question for you, Alex, just like, how do you, maybe it's addressing that, this, that article you wrote as well, but like, how, how do you expect the short-term rental market, if there is some kind of economic downturn in the future, how do you expect that the short-term rentals to be affected by it? Yeah. So people don't stop. And I'm sure you've heard this already. People don't stop traveling. They, they just, instead of taking the extended Europe vacation for two weeks, they're going to take an extended week vacation wherever they live a couple hours away. And that's one of the, when I talk to some students that I teach on what we're talking about, one of the things that I tell them is whenever you read a real estate book, they're like, you need to start in your backyard. And that is true for short-term rentals in some cases. But if you're like in a busy metro market and you want to get into more, I guess, cheaper real estate, but more rural, what I recommend doing is you're going to know your market better than anyone. And off of that, what I say is think of a place where people in your city like to vacation, like to take an extended weekend vacation to. 
that market's going to be an hour to two away. I like to use the two extreme examples in the States of people in New York City like to go to upstate New York. They'll drive four hours for a weekend for an upstate New York trip. And then in California, you have San Diego, Big Bear Lake. People will drive two hours, hour and a half, two hours up there. And those markets tend to do better. People will still be traveling to those markets. And if you do them, if you do that strategy with a unique property, people will still be coming to your property because we saw it. I saw it during COVID. We're still at 95 percent occupancy in all of our properties. It's like we're going through and I don't really consider what outside of the first three months of COVID. I don't really consider that like an economic downturn because people still traveled. It was just they traveled differently. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Obviously, you know, we could you sit here and talk for hours, Alex. Uh, I love it. I, mean, I really enjoy it. It's like something that we don't really talk about. But Susie and I have been trying to get into a short term rental down in the in the Smoky Mountains Blue Ridge area. So maybe we're happy to talk off for that. <laughs> yeah. If you guys are ever in the area, feel free to stop by. We'll do. Absolutely disagree. Yeah. Down in Nashville for sure. I have one question though, actually. Yeah. What's your favorite yeah. thing for short term rentals? I just, I love the experiences that we're creating. Like you actually, I mean, you go through your reviews and we've had people like do like small little weddings at our properties and stuff. So just seeing the pictures and stuff like that, that was one thing that I wasn't fully prepared for. You're always going to get a bad review, right? So it's like one of our very first A-frame has 260 reviews at this point. And it's obviously there are some bad reviews scattered in there, but that's my favorite thing is seeing some of the experiences. We've I remember specifically a gentleman um, he had lost his wife, but they had always traveled to Asheville as like their yearly trip. So he decided to travel by himself for the first year without his wife to our property. Nothing beats that. That just gives yeah. me chills just talking about it. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Speaking of traveling and going on vacations, things like that, that brings us to our adventurous four. These are four exploratory questions we ask all of our guests. Alex, are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so the first question is, where is one place you wish to travel to and why? wish to so my wife and i my wife and i are middle eastern and we'd love to we we did our honeymoon in the maldives so that would be the answer to the question if i didn't we didn't already go there because that's like the epitome we had a cabana over the water and everything cool. we did a layover we did yeah we did a layover in dubai we wish we would have stayed like a week in dubai prior to that so that's going to be our next big trip is dubai that's yeah cool. that is cool dubai is awesome so the second yeah. question is what is one thing on your bucket list and how are you leveraging real estate investing to achieve it one thing on my bucket list is to and I'm I'm slowly getting there, but I want the the point of a business is so you step away from what you do full time to to pursue your business, and you could get the issue with that sometimes is you can get trapped in that you're working 70, 80, 90 hours trying to build your business. So the goal I think as a business owner is to be able to disconnect from your business whenever you want and have your business run itself. So when I say bucket list, I want my business to be able to fund my lifestyle and not the other way around. So that's what that's what my bucket list is in the next six months to a year is com not completely stepping away because what I enjoy doing is stuff like this, the podcast, putting content together and looking at pu putting together communities together, like designing them and stuff. But in terms of day-to-day -day stuff, I want to be able to step away from that. I like it. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the third question we have for you, Alex, is, I'm going to change this up a little bit, but here, here it is. What is one piece of advice for someone who wants to start investing in short-term rentals? Yeah, you need to be like, no matter what you do, you need to be like laser focused in whatever you do. If, if you're working a full-time job, I recommend setting aside two to three hours a day. One of my One of my favorite books is The One Thing, and it talks about two to three hours a day on whatever, no matter how much time you don't think you have, you could dedicate 30 minutes to something. Yeah. Um, so that, that's what I started is just like laser focused three hours a day. I put the Instagram away, I put the TV away, and I just focused on that. So just being hyper focused on, on short term rentals, assume as much as content. There's so much free. There's stuff like this. There's so much free content out there. Yeah. Yeah. So that our fourth and final question is, if you had unlimited resources available to you, how would you leave an impact? Yeah, and we, we, we're, my wife and I are actually working with this right now. So we're we're establishing a 501c3 for my, so we're both my wife and I are first generation American, but my, so I, I served in the Marine Corps, but my uh, my family's originally from Northern Iraq. That's, that's where we're born raised in a couple of her parents in villages and my parents in villages, which is interesting. But during like, the wars and everything, a lot of that area was like destroyed. And that's, that was like sort of like the setting of the Bible, essentially, no matter what your religious preferences are, like that was the setting of the Bible is like where my parents grew up. So we, we speak Aramaic and I'd love to, we're putting it together a 51C3 to help rebuild some of those communities that were like impacted both from the war. And then also like when ISIS took over that area in 2013. Yeah. 
cool. That is really cool. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Really cool. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate your time. Would you mind sharing with our adventurous family how they can learn more about you? I know you have a YouTube channel and things like that. I can build with that or something like that. You just share that, whatever else you want to share with them. How they can get a hold of you. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, Alex Builds is the YouTube channel. It's a, a little blue treehouse logo. If, if you guys are having trouble having find it, finding it, I just essentially I was going out to all my properties and I was like, I'm just going to bring a video camera with me. So we talk about, yeah, we talk about real estate development and then we talk about some management stuff as well. Just some of the tools I'm using in my business. So that's Alex Builds. You guys can check me out on my personal or my my personal site, which is alexgerbo.com. It has all of my stuff. I just recently put together a short-term rental development course. If anyone's interested in that, the link to that is in the alexgerbo.com as well. Well, cool. and we'll make sure to have it in the show notes so that everybody can awesome. as well. Yep. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alex, for joining us today. It's been a lot of fun. I learned a lot actually about short-term rentals that I did not know before. So I do highly appreciate that. And everyone, if you are interested in short-term rentals, please reach out to Alex because I know he has a wealth of knowledge that we did not even get to cover today and he'd be happy to help you. Awesome, I appreciate you guys. Absolutely, so until next time, explore more adventure awaits. Woo!